Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Stacey, and I'm coming to you from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. Now, for this episode, we are going to be taking a look at octopuses. So I hope that you are uh, ready to explore this very interesting world of an invertebrate. We, uh, we're going to be looking at a lot of different things about octopuses and even maybe a few of their relatives. Now, if you have any thoughts that you would like to share or any questions that you want to ask, we encourage you to send us a text. The number is right down here. It's 562-286-1838. So send us a text and we are more than happy to answer those questions for you. Now, if you're watching this uh, after the fact or if, you know, some time has passed and you're like, you know, I really want to ask a question, you can also email us and that email address is live at lbaop.org. So live, L-I-V-E at L B A O P dot org. Okay, so octopuses. Now, first of all, did you know that that's how you'd say the plural of octopus is octopuses? So we're going to be looking at a few different varieties here and taking a look at what makes an octopus an octopus. Now, as you can see here behind me, this cool picture is a picture of an octopus. And this one is actually called a two-spot octopus because we can see one spot right here, and it has another one on the other side. So this is a two-spot octopus. It's actually one that is local to us here in Southern California. Now take a look at this animal here. If you were to point out the different uh, features of it, the different external anatomy or body parts of uh, this octopus, do you think that's a pretty easy thing to do or a little bit tough? Now, some things might be a little bit easy, right? Uh, we can see here that they have arms, and we know that. They have arms, and underneath their arms are all these really cool suction cups. We'll revisit suction cups in just a little bit. The other thing that is really easy to notice are the eyes. Can you see the eye? Now, it does have one on each side of its body, so we can really only view one from here, but that's this right here. So that is the eye of the octopus. Now, the spot here is what we call a false eye spot. So there are lots of animals in the ocean and even some on land that have things that look a, a, look a lot like eyes, but they're not eyes. And that's really there to fool animals around them. This eye is bigger than the actual eye. Maybe it looks like a much bigger animal, especially if the octopus was to make itself big and it stretches the skin a little bit. It might look a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's one way that it pretends to be larger so that maybe its predators won't go after it because it looks too big to eat. So we can see the eye. We know this species here has a false eye spot. Other than the eye and all of the arms and, and suction cups, where is the rest of this octopus? It's really kind of almost tough to tell, right? Well, this big thing that's hanging out back here that almost looks like part of its head this is actually their body. It's called a mantle, and it houses all of the organs that the octopus needs to survive. The head is really just a space right here between the eyes. So right here is where its brain would be, and then the mouth is actually located between all of the arms, much closer to the eyes. Now, wait a minute. If you think about this for a second, the mouth is on this end. The head and brain are here and its body is over here. That means when it eats its food, the food has to go through its head, through its brain, and into its body. Crazy. So it actually has like a donut-shaped brain with a hole in the center that the esophagus goes through. So when they swallow their food, for us, we swallow our food here. It goes down our throat into our esophagus, and it goes down into our stomachs. For them, it has to go through their head and into their body, into their, their organs. So it's pretty crazy. Now, an octopus eye is a little bit different than our eye in a way. The pupil looks different. If you were to look in the mirror or maybe look at somebody else in the room, our pupil, so the dark part of our eye, is round. And when it gets really bright, it can get smaller. And when it gets really dark, it can get bigger, but it's always round. Take a look at this eye. Can you see the dark part? It's not round, is it? It's actually a line. 
And there are other animals out there with pupils that are very similar to this. They have a line or a different shape instead. And that's okay. It still works like uh, the same way that our eye does in a way. It has a lens inside that can focus it. I don't know of any octopuses that need glasses or, or anything like that. But, um, but they do have like a, a way to focus in their eyes so they can see pictures. They can see movement. Um, but octopuses are colorblind. They don't have the same kind of um, parts in their eye that help them see color as we do. So we have specific parts in our eye that help us see those colors. They don't have them. So we are learning a lot about an octopus's body. Now, uh, we do see a lot of these suction cups here. Octopuses are very well known for their eight arms and all of those suction cups that are the entire length of the arm of the octopus. And you may notice that not all the suction cups are the same size. Whoa, that was a great example. Some of them are very large and some of them are very small. The big ones are usually located much closer to where their mouth is. So the smaller ones tend to be on the tips of their arms. But these suction cups are pretty amazing. What do you think they do with the suction cups? Let's take a, take a watch, make some observations. What is this octopus doing? Well, yeah, as you can see, it's sticking, right? It is actually using those suction cups to stick to a surface, allowing it to walk easily. So that's what those suction cups can do. What else can a suction cup do? Or all of the suction cups together? What can they, they do? They can also capture food. That's right. Now, these octopus suction cups can be very, very strong. In fact, um, the bigger ones right here on a really big octopus can even um, hold on to like 10 pounds, just one suction cup. So they're really quite strong. And that's a really great thing if you're going to be trying to capture your food and you don't want that food to get away from you. Well, what do you think an octopus eats? Well, let's watch its behavior again. We know that it's going to use its arms to capture food. What kind of food do you think it eats? Well, why don't we actually take a look at its mouth? And maybe its mouth can tell us a little bit more about what it eats. Now, it's really hard to tell in these videos and in pictures because their mouth is just tucked in there. And it's kind of hidden unless they, they really kind of bring it out. So we're going to go to my document camera. And this is a way for us to look at smaller things kind of up close. Now, we have a model of a beak. And uh, the beak is, is really what an octopus and a squid, which is its relative, and um, cuttlefish, what they have to help them eat. So let's go take a look at this. Um, let's go take a look at this beak here. Okay, so you can kind of see, it's a little bit tough, but you can kind of see how it gets its name beak, right? Take a look at this. So it is quite sharp, okay? And this is the opening. So this is the very front of the beak, and this is the part that would be attached to the esophagus or the, the octopus itself. So it's quite sharp, huh? Good for, for biting, but is it good for chewing? Okay, so now that we have taken a look at this, we have a better idea of what their mouth looks like. We know the mouth is located between all of those arms. So what is this octopus going to eat? Well, an octopus is actually pretty good at eating a lot of different things. In fact, uh, their diet is, is pretty diverse. They have a lot of things that they could potentially eat. And that's actually one of the reasons why if you see an octopus in a place like the Aquarium of the Pacific, uh, you often don't see too many neighbors. And that's because um, they could potentially eat a lot of them. So they will eat fish. Do you think it's easy for them to capture fish? Well, we know that they walk around, right? So they walk around um, using their arms, and so the fish tend to swim. Well, there's some that hang out at the bottom. Maybe those are the ones that they'll capture. What else is located on the bottom of the ocean that they might be able to eat? How about a crab? 
Octopuses, uh, it seems, <laughs> for many species at least, that they really like to eat crab, especially giant Pacific octopus. So they can actually capture a crab, and uh, that beak that we were looking at is tough enough that it can get through the shell or exoskeleton of that crab. So we know that that mouth is designed to actually eat that kind of, um, that kind of food. They will eat lots of other things as well. Um, including maybe squid or even other octopuses. Um, they eat clams, uh, shrimp, lots and lots of different things. Basically, if they can catch it and it's seafood, they're going to eat it. However, you may have noticed I didn't say that they eat things like plants and seaweed because they don't. Um, they are carnivores. They're really going to go after the different kinds of seafood that they're able to find. And now how would they even find that seafood? Well, they're walking around on the ocean floor. Do you see all these suction cups? Not only are they good for sticking, walking, and capturing their food, they're also great for smelling and tasting. Now, smell and taste in the ocean are very, very similar. It's basically sensing all the chemicals around. Even for us, smell and taste is, is kind of similar in a way. Like if you get a cold and you get a stuffy nose, it's hard to taste your food sometimes, right? They're connected. And in, in a way, it's kind of like that for an octopus as well. So when their suction cups touch something, it's actually tasting what it is at the same time. So as they're walking around, they may actually touch something that, like a clam, that they may want to eat. Their eyes are also really good at being able to search and find their food as well. So they're going to be able to look around to locate food too. Now we have a red octopus video. Oh. What is that red octopus doing? Well, take a look at this. We actually have a little, a little box and we put some food in the box and we put the box in that tub. So that white tub that our Aquarius JJ uh, has there, she's gonna put that box and food in, the t in that tub. And our little red octopus can sense that food. So it goes to the box. But wait, in order to get the food, it needs to open the box. And then, of course, it needs to go get that food. Ha ha. So their suction cups are going to be used to help them sense their world around them, to help them locate food like that. What's fascinating is that even though they are an invertebrate, an invertebrate is an animal without a backbone. And a lot of invertebrates, when we think of invertebrates, it's things like slugs, uh, sea anemones, jellies, um, on land, even bugs, right? Crabs are invertebrates. None of those animals have backbones the way that we do. Well, this is also an animal without a backbone. Most animals without backbones, we think of as not being the most intelligent things out there. They are intelligent enough to be able to survive in their environment, but it's different than us. It's different for um, like problem solving and solving puzzles. Well, as we saw that octopus was able to not only locate the food, but figure out that it needed to open the box. It was able to the open bo the box, and then it knew that it had to kind of squish itself in there in order to get the food. Well, octopuses are, are very intelligent. They're probably the most intelligent invertebrates out there. Um, and they're also great at squeezing themselves into tight spaces, as you can see right here. So the red octopus video that we saw, that octopus was able to squeeze into that box. And you can see here, this octopus has really squeezed its way underneath some really big rocks and the bottom of the ocean here. Now, one of the reasons why they need to squish themselves into such a small space is it's safer if you kind of squish yourself into a small space, right? Big predators aren't going to come after you. And we actually have a question here from Gage in Montana. Wow, Gage, cool. Um, what are the, um, the octopus's predators? Well, it's basically things that are going to be bigger than it. So um, there are some birds 
that will eat octopuses if they can get them, maybe in the more shallow water. Um, there are some fish that will eat octopuses. Other octopuses will eat other octopuses. Um, sea otters, seals, um, those are all animals that might be predators of an octopus. So, um, so yes, if you are good at squeezing yourself into tight spaces like octopuses can, you have a better chance of surviving against these animals that are bigger than you because they cannot squeeze themselves into those tight spots. For an octopus, they can usually squeeze through a space that is the size of their beak or bigger. Okay, so if their beak can fit through, then they can fit through as well. Take a look at that. And one of the reasons why is because they have no bones. So for an octopus, being an invertebrate is a benefit. It's able to squeeze through a tight space to stay away from predators and to hide. It also allows them to kind of rest a little bit more. So, uh, so that's a really great thing for an octopus. Now, how else can an octopus hide? It's actually one of the uh, more famous things about them, let's say they have excellent camouflage. So they're really known for their ability to hide. And watch that. Oh my goodness. If you were just swimming by before that octopus turned that dark, deeper color, it was virtually impossible to see it. So not only can an octopus change color, but it can also change texture. Now let's first look at that color, okay? So they're able to change the color of their skin because their skin actually has a special, um, special things on it called chromatophores. They're special cells that are color changing cells. And these chromatophores can be used to change color to camouflage, but they can also be used to change color to communicate. And in a lot of ways, those chromatophores, those ch color changing cells work a lot like how our eyes did. Remember how I was saying earlier that your eye can open and close, okay? Your pupil can open and close like that. That's what these chromatophores are doing. So when they're open, it really shows a lot of the color. When they close, you don't really see that color again. And this here is actually squid skin. So we can see what it looks like for a squid, but it's the same mechanism for an octopus too, because again, they are relatives, okay? So we know that these chromatophores are really great for changing the color of the octopus. But what about the texture of their skin? So the chromatophores don't actually do anything for the texture. But look at this. Now, sometimes this is a giant Pacific octopus. Sometimes the giant Pacific octopus, their skin is super smooth, not a bump in sight. Other times it can be a little bit bumpy. And right now, if you look carefully, look at all those folds and bumps and peaks. These things right here, they're called papillae. And basically, there are muscles that are, that's attached to their skin that when they squeeze, the little bumps pop out. And so this is how they can change the texture of their skin. So it's pretty amazing. Oh, excellent. Mr. Sanchez's class is actually asking how an octopus changes color. We were just talking about that. We are on the same brain wavelength. I love that. All right. So, oh, it's Mrs. Okay, sorry about that. It's a, it's a Mrs. Sanchez. Okay, so, um, so we, have, we have the color changing cells, those chromatophores. Look, it's already, it's, it's a different texture, right? So this is the same octopus, the giant Pacific octopus. And you can see now that the bumps are a little bit smaller. Okay, so it's pretty crazy how well they are at camouflaging. This not only allows them to blend in with color, but allows them to blend in even with texture. Now take a look at this octopus here. Did you see that? It's incredible. Okay, so watch it again. So we know this octopus, it's a deep dark color, smooth texture, as it settles into the coral or the rocks here, 
Did you notice? Not only did it change that color, but it also changed the texture. Excellent, excellent when it comes to camouflage. So why camouflage? Well, we know they want to hide from predators, right? Uh, nobody wants to be eaten by another animal, so they're really great at hiding from predators. Well, they also sometimes want to hide from their prey. It allows them to get a little bit closer to the food that they want to eat, or maybe the food they want to eat is coming closer to them. Then it has, they have a higher chance of being able to actually capture that food. So a very good and important thing, because the more they have to chase around their food, the more energy that they have to use. And that means that if they use a lot of energy, they also have to eat more food in order to supply them with that energy. So in fact, having camouflage is a really helpful thing because they don't have to use as much energy and they won't have to hunt down as much food to get that energy. So it's a really great thing that these octopuses have. Now, all of these things that we have been talking about, um, all of their behaviors, all of the characteristics they have, even their body parts, these are all adaptations. Adaptations are things that help living things stay alive. So it might be to help them stay alive from being eaten, but also just staying alive in general. So they are really great at being able to do that because of all these fabulous adaptations that they have. Okay, so this here is an interesting video. What do you notice? What are, what are we even looking at here? <laughs> this is an octopus. It is an octopus for sure. Um, right here is the octopus's eye, really close up. So then what's going on down here? Well, this octopus is breathing. That's right. So what you're seeing is inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So what it's doing is it's opening this hole here and that brings the water into its mantle. Remember the mantle is the body, right? That's where all of the organs are. And then after it goes in there, the water's actually kind of washing over all of their organs. It's pretty crazy. And included with all of that are their gills. So their gills are inside their mantle, this part right here. So the gills are in there. The gills of an octopus are going to take the oxygen out of the water because they need oxygen just like us. But this oxygen's in the water. For us, our oxygen's in the air. And then they're going to breathe out. And they're going to breathe out through this little thing right here called a siphon. This siphon um, will push the water out so that way they're able to bring more water in there. And that is how they breathe. So the water goes in there goes over their gills, and then it comes out of the siphon here. Bloop. So we know that it helps them breathe, but the siphon is a multi-purpose body part. <laughs> Not only does it help them breathe, like we can see right here, but for an octopus and a squid both, they use that siphon to help them swim. So Octopuses don't have fins the same way that a fish does, right? It doesn't have a tail that it can swing side to side and push itself through the water. So instead, it brings the water into its mantle, just like it's breathing. And then when they push it really hard out of their siphon, it's jet propulsion. So they can actually swim like you see this squid illustration doing. So an octopus can do the same thing. So if it pushes the water out of the siphon slowly, then it's just breathing. If it pushes it out really fast, then it can swim. And usually it's just one jet, and then they have to breathe in again, and then it's another jet, and then they have to breathe in, and it's another jet. So it's not like they can continuously swim really, really fast, right? They're actually um, not the best swimmers out there, and that's one of the reasons why camouflage is so very important. But for an octopus, uh, a giant Pacific octopus, like the ones that we were looking at earlier, they can actually go, here we go, giant Pacific octopus. They can actually go up to 25 miles an hour in that short burst. So it can be very fast, but again, it's only very short lived. It's not like they can go for a very long period of time at 25 miles an hour. Really their best bet is to be able to walk around, okay?
So we're talking about anatomy, right? Their body parts. And Lucas is asking, what are the functions for their hearts? So Lucas, you're right. They do have three hearts. Squid and octopus are the same way. They all have three hearts. So what's interesting is they have um, one uh, systemic heart. So basically one heart for their kind of like their whole system. And then they have two brachial hearts. And the brachial hearts are mainly for their gills. So you have like the one heart that kind of pushes blood and everything for their body, and then the two for their gills. And they are not the easiest things to locate. They are actually inside the mantle, right? That's where all of their organs are. So they're right in, in there. Now, here's a question for you. Octopuses have blood. They have a heart. So we know that they need to have um, the heart to pump blood, right? But do you think their blood is the same as ours? Do you think I would pose this question if it was? <laughs> our blood, when it's oxygenated, is red, right? So when oxygen is with the blood, our blood turns red. Very red, actually. For an octopus, it's different. Their blood is blue. Now, it's kind of crazy to think about, but there are um, several kinds of animals out there that do have this really cool blue blood. And the whole reason why is it's ba the base of it is a little bit different. Um, have you ever heard that we need to make sure we have iron as part of our diet? Part of the reason why is because we have iron in our blood and that helps with um, how the oxygen moves around with your blood. Okay, so when we breathe in, the oxygen goes in our lungs, or the, the air goes in our lungs. The lungs get the oxygen and it puts it in our blood. And all of the iron is kind of helping out with holding on to that oxygen. So when the blood gets pumped around your body, your muscles and your nerves and all the other things in your body can use the oxygen. Okay, so that's really important. For an octopus, it's a little bit different. Instead of having iron in their blood, they have copper. It's just a different, like metal, basically, a different way for them to hold on to blood. Now, it's not as efficient as ours. So um, iron is, is better at holding on to that oxygen, but it still works. So having all of these hearts, having more than one heart is actually really helpful um, because they are quite active. So they do move a lot, right? And so um, they need to make sure that they can still get oxygen to every part of their body. Now, they have three hearts, and that's different than us. We only have one. Here's another thing that's a little bit different. How many brains do we have? One. And where's our brain? Here. Okay. So an octopus, we know it has a head. I told you earlier that it does have a donut-shaped brain. So we know that there's a brain in here, right, by its eyes. But it's not really its only brain. Octopuses are a little peculiar in that they have a brain right here, but they also have things that are very similar to brains, basically for their entire um, body, right? For all of these arms here. So what that allows them to do is actually react much quicker. Their brain doesn't have to tell their arm to reach out to grab food. Their arm senses food. It reaches out and grabs it and says, oh yeah, brain, I'm doing this. And the brain's like, oh, hey, food. <laughs> so it's a little bit different than us. It's a little different, but it still totally works for them. What's really cool is all of the arm brains can actually talk to each other. And uh, they're all linked together. And that way, when one arm senses food, they can actually react together to grab that food and bring it back. In a way, they almost don't even have to rely as much as their central uh as much in their central brain. So the brain in their head doesn't have to think quite as much as ours does. We have to think a lot, right? There's some things that happen that we don't think about too much, like breathing. Most of the time when you breathe, you don't think about it, but sometimes we have to think about it. That's kind of what this central brain is, is for, right? It's also to help them to remember to bring water in and push water out. So even though, um, they have a brain. Their brains work really different than ours. So we know that an octopus is a very different creature than us, and I think they're pretty incredible. I hope that you do too. Now, one of the things here at the aquarium is that um, we want to make sure that our octopus stays 
interested and active in its life because that helps to make sure that it's nice and healthy. And being so intelligent, it means we actually have to give our octopus bud some things to do, some enrichment is what we call it. Um, oh, Oh, excellent. So it, it looks like Avery in Santa Monica asked, um, what is the trickiest thing about caring for an octopus? A couple of things are tricky. Number one, you need to know what they eat so that way you don't have them living in the same place as things that they eat. But that's a pretty easy thing to figure out. The next thing is to make sure that it stays um, active and it stays thinking, okay? So just like us, we don't wanna get bored being bored is hard. So maybe we'll use our imagination to think up of uh, something else. Or we're like, you know, I'm bored, but I like drawing. And so you'll draw. Um, so that's kind of what we can do. For an octopus that lives here at the aquarium, we want to give it things to do. Now, normally an octopus in the ocean has to think about capturing food, staying away from predators, finding a new home, maybe even fighting another octopus for a den for its home. So they don't have to do that here because we, uh, we don't have predators that live with it. We actually give them food and they don't live together. So they don't have to fight for anything. So one of the things that we do instead is to give it other things to think about. We give it puzzles. Now that box is one of the puzzles that we might give it. Another thing is to take a bunch of tubes and attach the tubes together and to put food in there. And the octopus has to sense its surroundings to be able to find the food, to get the food and bring it to itself. We can even put food in a jar, screw the lid on and give it to the octopus. And then it has to figure out to unscrew the lid of the jar to get the food on the inside. And they do. That's what's so fascinating. They can totally problem solve and figure things out on their own. Now, I think one of my favorite things that we've done is we actually put food in a little toy boat and floated it on the top of the exhibit. And then the octopus basically came up from the depths and was like the Kraken and pulled the boat down with the crab in it. So that way it was able to eat uh, that, that crab. So I think that's pretty funny. Even interacting with a person who cares for it is really good for that octopus because when it touches her, it actually, remember, it smells and it tastes with its suction cups, right? So it smells and it tastes her. Maybe she was touching different kinds of food and it's trying to figure that out. When it has a new visitor, it can touch somebody and it's like, oh, this is new. And it has to think about that and process that. So those are all really interesting things to keep our octopus occupied and thinking. Now, that's a lot of energy that they use to think like that. And oftentimes when they've used up all that energy, they need a real good rest. And so the whole next day after thinking really hard, they're basically going to be sleeping most of that day. All right, a couple other questions that came in. Oh, Avery has one more. How many octopuses does the aquarium have? Let's see, right now, I know we have a giant Pacific octopus. I believe we have a big eye octopus. Um, and I think we have a day octopus as well. Um, I'm not sure if we still have a red octopus or not, but I know that we have had them before. We have had um, two spot octopuses before too. I don't believe that we have one right now though. And all of these octopuses kind of live in their own spaces <laughs> for sure. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, it sounds like my friend Amanda, who's showing you all the really cool videos and pictures here, said she has a picture of a day octopus. Oh, video. Cool. So this is the day octopus. One of the reasons it has its name day octopus is because it's pretty active during the day, which is unusual for octopuses. They can be active during the day. They tend to be more active at night when it's a little bit safer for them to maneuver around. All right. Well, while we're watching this, let's answer a few more questions. Andrew asked, what is the smallest octopus? The smallest octopus is called Octopus Wolfie, and it is 1.5 centimeters. Oh my, that's little. I actually didn't know that. Thank you, Alicia. My friend Alicia is the one who's taking all your questions here, and she actually gave us that answer. Thanks so much, Alicia. That's really helpful. <laughs> we have Julian asking, how do they have ink inside, and how do they make it? Oh, very cool. They have a special organ inside their body, so inside that mantle, that makes ink. So that way, when they use it, it takes a little time, but they can refill it by making it again. And the way that they use it is, do you remember that siphon, how I said it's a multi-purpose 
uh, thing. Oh, there it is, that siphon. Well, it comes out of there. Okay, now look at that. It disappeared. Did you notice that? It's because it came out the other side. They can actually switch the siphon from right to left and back again. It's a crazy organ, or it's a crazy part of their body, I think. Uh, also, in case you've ever wondered, that's also where they go to the bathroom. Okay, moving on. <laughs> oh, Talia actually asked. Oh, Natalia asked. Oh, how does an octopus poop? So, Natalia. <laughs> Excellent. Looks like we answered that question. So, they do poop. Uh, they go to the bathroom <laughs> from their siphon. Multi-purpose, my friends. Um, okay, and then the last question I have here is from Julie. Can an octopus really learn and have compassion? Um, so an octopus can definitely learn. Um, and we've seen that just based on the puzzles that we give them. If we give them a puzzle and they figure it out, the next time we give them the puzzle, they figure it out a little bit faster. Um, and they also, they, they seem to have a, an ability to learn. In terms of compassion, um, that's a really hard thing to be able to know. Uh, the octopus may get to know the person that works with them, but I'm not sure if if there is um, like empathy or anything like that involved. I think that's a little bit more specific to say like humans, um, but interesting question. So their intelligence is different, right? The way they think, the way they process is a little bit different and the way they express themselves is a little bit different as well. So, um, so I'm not really sure about compassion. Well, everyone, if we didn't get your questions, I'm um, sorry we didn't get to you um, on the program here, but we will text you those answers. And again, if you are watching this um, after the fact and you are so curious about other octopus things or anything else uh, aquarium related, go ahead and send us an email. Our email address is live at LBAOP. Dot org. Well, this does it for us today and with our programs, but we do have more programs for the rest of this week. So we hope that we will see you again. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.